Hey everyone, it's Jess Lancel, your local naturalist with Story County Conservation, and I'm here today to talk to you about a fun activity you can do this winter, and that is animal tracking. Winter is a great time to start learning tracking for a couple of reasons. First of all, you may have noticed that in the start of winter, sometimes you have some warmer days followed by really cold nights. And those warmer days are really great for creating muddy conditions so animals can walk across that wet, soft mud. And by the evening, it freezes, leaving a really well-preserved track for you to find. But also in the winter time, snow happens. And that's when tracking is its absolute best because it makes those tracks and other animal clues really obvious to find. We're going to go inside to my classroom right now and we're going to start some very, the, the tracking basics. Alright, so we're back inside in my classroom here and what I've done is I've drawn out some tracks that we are going to try to identify. So if you look, I just want you to kind of make a guess how many different animals do you think we're going to be learning about today? And try to figure out what they are. Try to take in the whole board. Is there anything you notice, any clues that you're picking up on, things left behind that could give you a clue about what that animal might be? So when you come across an animal track, there is a list of things I want you to start looking for and asking yourself. So the first thing is, where are you? Where you are, the habitat you are near, can give you a really big clue about what that animal might be. Are you in an urban area, like in your neighborhood? Chances are you're probably not going to come across certain animals in your neighborhood. Are you in a forest? Are you near water? Those are really good clues to look for. Is the track starting from a tree or under a bush or in a cornfield? So observe your surroundings. What kind of habitat are you in? The next thing I want you to look for is the size of the track. How big the track is gives you a pretty good clue about the size of the animal. And I also want you to look at the track and see if you can figure out the difference between a front paw and a back paw. So let's start with this track right here. One of these is a front paw and the other is the back paw. Which one do you think is? the front paw or the back paw. Give it a look. So in the animal world, usually, the front paw is always going to be smaller than the back paw. The same way your hands are usually smaller than your feet. So if we look at this track, the front paw is right here, and this right here is the back paw. It, it is slightly larger. But you'll notice that they're also sitting right next to each other which gives us a clue about how the animal is moving. So you don't, can't just focus on just a track. If there's multiple tracks like this, you want to see if you can figure out the gait, how that animal is moving. In this case, the front paw is landing right next to the back paw. So a lot of animals move this way. It's called waddling. Bears move this way, but also a local Iowa animal moves this way as well. You can also look at the distance between the tracks to give you an idea of how big the animal's stride is, how far apart those footprints are going to be. Another thing you could do is actually count the toes. So if we count the front paw, it's got one, two, three, four, five. And if we count the back paw, it's got one, two, three, four, five. This animal has five fingers and five toes that look pretty similar to us. I'll give you another clue, though this one it isn't on the board here. This can be an urban animal, so you can find it in your neighborhoods, but its preferred habitat is actually the forest, usually around a lot of trees that have holes in them called cavities. Sometimes you could also look for an animal's scat, its droppings that it leaves behind. Scat is a great clue to figure out what the animal is and what it eats. So this animal scat, and this is just pretend, I wouldn't actually encourage you to touch real animal scat, is kind of 
long and tubular, kind of cigar shaped, and it's full of seeds, probably from bird food. And in the summertime, this could be full of seeds from berries as well. And anytime I find scat that's kind of long and tubular, it also tells me that this animal is going to eat meat. So the fact that it has seeds and it's long and tubular tells me that this animal is an omnivore. It eats plants and meat. So what could be an animal that eats plants and meat? It can be in an urban area as well as the forest, prefers tree cavities, has five fingers and five toes that look just like ours, but smaller, and moves by waddling around like this. Any clues? Any guesses? This animal is a raccoon. So we just figured out one animal mystery. It wasn't too hard. This next mystery is something that you can actually find in your own backyard. So I want you to take a look over here. And first of all, I want you to ask yourselves, how many animals do you think is in this mystery? So hopefully you notice that the tracks do look different from each other. So to figure out the difference, let's, let's look at some of the clues that were left behind. So first of all, again, what are some things you notice around the tracks? For example, one thing that I notice about this set of tracks is that it starts and it ends with trees. Whereas this set of tracks, it starts in a grassy area. What other things can you notice? What other things can you find? For example, do you see any food left behind? So a really good clue right here is that we have some broken up walnuts. This animal's food is primarily nuts, although it can eat other things as well. Let's take a look at the pattern now. Remember how I told you to see if you could figure out which ones are the front paws and which ones are the back paws? Well, let's take a look at here. Which do you think are the front paws and which do you think are the back? This might be a little more confusing. So if you study the track, and hopefully you remembered that I told you that in the animal world, the front paws are always going to be smaller than the back paws. But this is confusing because here are the front paws, but they're actually in the back. And the back paws are in the front. So why is that? Why would an animal's feet be backwards like that? You think they're crab walking across the ground? How are they doing that? So the answer lies in all and how they move. So this animal's gait is called galloping, meaning when this animal runs, the way it lands, it lands with its front paws in the back and its back paws in the front. So here he is galloping from one tree to the other. Remember the next thing you can do is you can count the toes. So in this track, the toes are really visible, which can help us figure out what the animal is. So if we count the front toes, one, two, three, four, there's four. But if we count the back toes, one, two, three, four, five, there's five. So we know it can't be a raccoon because a raccoon had five fingers, five toes. Hmm. All right. So we know this animal eats nuts. It travels from tree to tree. It's got four fingers and five toes. What do you think this animal is? All right, so before I reveal to you what this animal is, I want us to take a look at this another animal track mystery because these two animals are often confused with each other for many reasons. First of all, they live in the same habitat and in the snow, their footprints look very similar. And there's only a couple small ways to tell the difference. So to do that, you really need to look at the patterns. So if we compare them, and if we look at my picture here, I actually have some prints in the snow. And you can see that you can't always count the toes. So we're going to have to look at the pattern to really see the differences. Are you able to tell? 
So the difference between the two is you have to look at where the front paws land. In this animal, the front paws are side by side. In this animal, the front paws are back and forth. Here's another clue for you. This animal, you're not really gonna see going tree to tree. Usually you're gonna see it going from maybe a bush or a big grassy area. It's gonna find things to hide under. Also, this animal tends to leave a lot of its scat around for you to find. And they kind of look like little Cocoa Puffs. Not Cocoa Puffs, don't eat them. <laughs> if you're still not sure, I'm gonna give you another clue. I found this in my own backyard. This animal has been taking little nips off of my dogwood bush. And I could tell what this animal was simply by looking at how it ate that bush. You see, this animal has really sharp front incisors, front teeth, that is used for clipping and nipping. And when it takes a bite out of twigs or bark, it's going to leave this angle like this. Think you got it yet? If you guess that this track is rabbit, you are correct. This is from a cottontail rabbit. But what about this track? Have you figured that one out yet? The tree a tree and the nuts were a pretty good clue. This is your local fox squirrel. All right, so now that you know the differences between the squirrel and the rabbit, simply by looking at the patterns of their front feet, and also where they're going and coming from, I encourage you to go in your backyard and see if you can find some of these signs as well. I wanna talk a little bit more about the rabbit and a little bit about its scat here because I think this is pretty neat and since it's so common to find them, this is something you can look into and discover yourself. So I actually went outside and just picked up a little bit of rabbit scat here. And normally I don't encourage people to handle scat with their bare hands, but in this case, I feel like it's pretty safe and I am gonna wash my hands afterwards. But I wanna show you something. When I break this rabbit scat apart, it's basically just sawdust. Check this out. So here's something really cool about rabbits, is in the winter time, they're eating a lot of bark and twigs, which is really hard for them to digest. So what they do is once they go to the bathroom the first time, they actually turn around and eat that pellet. That way it can get digested a second time and that really hard to digest cellulose gets broken down even more and then out comes the pellet that you're able to find. So that's why I'm able to pull this apart and basically all the nutrients have been extracted from it and I'm just left with sawdust. Pretty cool. So we went through some of the basic things that you wanna start looking for when you come across a track. Just to review, you wanna look for the habitat, what's around it. You're gonna look for the size of the track, see if you can figure out the difference between the front paw and the back paw because that's going to give you a clue about how the animal is moving which tells you about its gait. You're going to look at where it's going, where it's coming from. You're going to see if you can try to find any scat around which can also give you clues about what that animal eats. But there's other clues you could find too. Sometimes animals leave urine behind and sometimes that urine can have a real musky smell. That can give you a clue about what the animal is. You can look for leftover food, kind of like what we did with the squirrel and the rabbit. You can look for scrapes or scratches on trees or on the ground. You can see if there's any dens or nests or burrows nearby. And then you can also look and see if there's multiple tracks. And multiple tracks can be really fun because sometimes if there are multiple tracks, sometimes there's feathers or blood or bones left behind which means you have a little crime scene mystery you can try to solve as well. So this winter, I hope you get outside, 
look for some of these animal track mysteries. It's a great thing to do with kids as well because you get them engaged in making observations and asking questions and creating hypotheses and finding answers. So have fun this winter. Stay tuned to Story County Conservation as we keep updating videos and have activities coming your way. Thanks for joining me.